Um, <laughs> yesterday we had um, uh, a Second Amendment and Freedom Rally uh, at the federal building here in Los Angeles from 2 to 4 p.m. And um, we went out there because the folks who were against the Second Amendment had a rally, and we found out a day or two before that they were doing it. So we went out there to show that not all of us agree with that, uh, taking our guns like that. And um, it was, I was really, and I want to say thanks to everybody that showed up because it was a last minute notice. And normally people don't show up if you give them a two weeks notice. But we had a lot of folks to come and, and show up yesterday. And I, we had every race out there. We had blacks, Hispanics, Chinese. I, I guess that woman, some of them, they look like Chinese. <laughs> Chinese. Well, it's hard for me to know a Chinese from a a Japan lady from a person from a. Cause it's like black. They all look alike. All the whites and Jews look alike. All the blacks and. The, <laughs> uh, but one happy thing, it was really nice to see a lot of black people out there yesterday. That looked really, really well. Uh, because I believe that if black people were to wake up and get involved, we could save the country overnight. I really totally believe that. And the reason for that, because we've been so used, you know, we've been used for everything, every destruction, we've been used for that. And so I think now if blacks were to turn on these folks and stand up for good, we can change America for the good. I really do. And so thank you for showing up. And uh, Irma's, the PR guy, did an excellent job of putting that together in such a short span of time. I, I know that if we lose our Second Amendment, we might as well hang it up. We, really, you can just say goodbye. Excuse me. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. I think anyone, anyone, and if someone here disagrees with me, I'm so okay with that. But I think anyone who think that it's okay to turn your guns over to the government, to just let them take your guns, it's a fool. Really, they just don't see what's going on. They really, really just don't see. 
And I realized that, you know, it, it, I don't think it's a sin that you don't do it. So I'm not calling you a sinner. Is there a difference between a sinner and a fool? No. no. <laughs> I'm just asking. I think the whole Constitution is important, but the First and Second Amendment, in my opinion, is at the top of the list. And if you notice the children of Satan, that's what they want to do. They want to shut you down, and then they want to take away the right to protect yourself. And one thing leads to another. It is mind-blowing. But it was so, if I could use a liberal word, it was so healthy being out there. <laughs> it was just so healthy. <laughs> um, one thing I noticed about children of Satan, they, don't, they can't handle any light at all, none. They cannot handle any opposing view. They go like insane. If one person had stood out there against them, they all would have attacked him. Poor Judy. Judy from Corona came, and she had to walk through them, the children of Satan. <laughs> and they attacked her before she could even get across the street. I saw it on the news last night. They had gathered around, just yelling at her. And, and poor Judy, she was still standing up, though. She held her ground. I'm like, right on. And the reason that they are like that, the children of Satan, and I think a lot of Christians don't realize, is that we have the power in us. We have the light in us. We have the power. But Christians don't realize that. Not all, of course, but most do not realize that. And the children of Satan, and it's not the person per se, but that spirit that lives in that person or those people, they can see the light in you, and that's what scares them. That's what they don't like. Like. But the, the Christians don't realize that. You don't realize you have the power for everyday living. There is never a reason you should fail in life or lose in life. Not a reason you should lose. You have it in you to win in every area of life. Isn't that amazing? And then the greater the opposition is, it's like it should be hallelujah time for the Christians because uh, that brings out the best in us. I had several people call my radio show and complaining, oh, they take away all our rights, they're doing this. And so I asked, what are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, I'm not doing anything. I just call radio shows and, and talk about them. And I said, well, why don't you do something? Well, the media are not going to show up. And the, the, the politicians are all making their own decisions anyway. And I'm like, to me, that's more of a reason to do something. That's not a reason not to do something. But I realized a lot of people go and protest because they want to be on TV. They want the media to focus on them. They want to be recognized. They're not out there because it's the, it's the right thing to do. You know, and that's what, the, you know, their motivation is wrong. How many times the media has not showed up for us? I could care less. Yes, it's nice when they show up. You reach more people. But the fact that we brought some light into the darkness means more to me than anything else. Pastor would tell me a story about some guy, and he'll share it with you guys later. He read this book where some guy took off for a year and lived in the woods without anything. And all the revelation that he got just being out there and being alone it was mind-blowing, so he wrote a book about it. And one thing he shared with me short you know, this morning was that the guy said that a lot of people sell what they love doing out for money. They will sell out for money. Instead of loving the work that they do and being glad to have that work and do the best they can do with their hands or with their work, whatever it may be, they will sell out for the money, and so they lose their purpose in life. And a lot of people are like that. I absolutely love what I do. And when I say I love it, I'm not like walking around all in love with it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not walking around thinking that I'm in love with it either. I just, I, I, I do it for free. You know, it just, and it comes naturally. And I'm grateful for it. When I had my janitorial service, I had the same attitude about having that janitorial service that I have about what I do now. I was just so, um, I was grateful to be doing something, to have work, to have a job, to, 
and, and, and notice how it just bring the best out of me. And then the money came. But most people focus on the money and they lose sight of enjoying what they do in life. I don't care what it is. If you're a janitor, if you're a cook, a housekeeper, or whatever, if you just love doing it, be grateful, the money part will work out because God will take care of you. But most people don't know that. And I think that's why these folks don't show up for rallies. The media is not going to be there, so why must I go? How dumb is that, huh? To me, see, I, I told you they're a fool. They can't see they're blind. And in the scriptures, it says, do not be like the Pharisees. They're hypocrites. And I want to read that for you. Uh, let's see here. This is in Matthew 23. Page 147. Um, with the hat on, come and read it for me. Huh? I don't have a Bible. Come up here. Oh, go up there and read it? No, come up here. The Matthew. The Oh. Chapter 23 of Matthew, 1 through 12. Yeah. Okay, and I'll tell you why I like this so much in a minute here. Okay, right here. Start right here and end right there. Okay. I like your hat inside the building. Then addressing the crowds <laughs> and his disciples, Jesus said, The scribes and the Pharisees occupy the chair of Moses. You must therefore do and observe what they tell you, but do not be guided by what they do, since they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy burdens and lay them on people's shoulders, but will they lift a finger to move them? Not they. Everything they do is done to attract attention, like wearing broader headbands and longer tassels and a fedora like mine. Like wanting to take the place of honor at banquets and the front seats in the synagogues, greeting, being greeted respectfully in the market squares and having people call them rabbi. Right here, right? Are we down to here? Oh, sorry. Yeah. You, however, must not allow yourselves to be called rabbi, since you have only one master and you are all brothers. You must call no one on earth your father, since you have only one father and he is in heaven. Nor must you allow yourselves to be called teachers, for you have only one teacher, the Christ. The greatest among you must be your servant. Anyone who raises himself up will be humbled, and anyone who humbles himself will be raised up. Thank you, buddy. Thanks a lot. All right, give it back to you. Isn't that amazing? That is so churchy. This, <laughs> this is exactly what's happening in the churches around the country. They are building these huge church buildings. Everybody and their mama going to them, being just like the preacher. And you don't ever see the preachers out on the front line. They're not at war with anybody or anything. They're just going there and the people are honoring them. I even know... I know people who don't even call the preacher, the preacher by his name. They call him pastor. <laughs> they don't even say pastor whatever, right? Pastor. I'm like, pastor who? Pastor is only, it only tells you what kind of work. It's like doctor, lawyer, Indian chief. It just tells you what kind of work. It's not your name. And, but these people love to be honored and worship, and the people go there and do it. They don't encourage the flock to get out and fight back, uh, you know, take part in the war, let your light shine in the darkness. They do none of that. And these Christians are going to church and just satisfied with that. I don't understand why would you even want to have a strong spirit, a powerful spirit of God inside of you, and you're not going to do anything. What's the purpose of having it? Just to brag about it or something? Oh, I know the Lord. And quote scriptures until the cows come home. What is the purpose of that? And the preachers are so phony. I was li saw a preacher today being interviewed. 30,000 people in his church, and he does nothing. Just make them feel good about being there. 
and the people fall for it. And then, unfortunately, even when they worship the pastors and uh, get all these robes and things for them and make the pastor feel good, then Christians who are sitting in the churches, not all, not all, not all, but their families are not even working either. Not only are they not going out on the front line, but their families are not working. So something is wrong with that. And, and they don't question it because the, the preacher won't question it. They don't ask themselves, well, what in the world am I just going to church for? How come I'm not involved? Why am I afraid to be involved? You know what I'm saying? I don't understand that kind of like, even when I was just the worst of the worst, and I'm not saying I'm so great now, I'm just saying, I still knew something wrong with the way I was living, and I knew something was wrong with having fear, and I knew something was wrong with um, not living as though I had a powerful life. But I didn't know how to get there, because the Bible, they read this over and over and over again in the Bible as I was growing up. But I'm thinking, well, if that's true, how come I don't have it? Well, you know, why am I just going to church looking good and not really, I have fear about everything. You ever question yourself like that? No? Only one person? All right. Let me just do one more scripture. I know you, some of you hate reading all these scriptures. Uh, this is Matthew 5, 13 through 16. And this is all about what's happening right now in life. And God tell us not to be that way. You got power. Go out in the world and let your light shine. And if you notice, Christ didn't even have a church. Did Christ have a church anywhere? No. He didn't have a church. He was out protesting against the gays. <laughs> <laughs> He was out protesting against the people who were trying to take away our rights to bear arms. He was so much against that, taking away our rights to bear arms, that this guy, is it Samson, who defeated Goliath? David. David, David defeated Goliath with a slingshot, right? Is that right? Yeah. And so God, God said, you know what? Let him take your gun. I'll put the power in a slingshot, and you can kill him that way. He was so against them taking away the right. But the Christians here, do they, do they understand that? No. Why have the light if you're not going to use the light? Um, George, I mean, not George, but Jacqueline, would you come read this for me? Oh, you're not going to read it anymore because of that? You're not comfortable doing it. You're not going to face your uncomfortableness? Not today. <laughs> You're going to put it off for tomorrow. Okay, I understand. I respect that. Um, this is uh, 5, 13 through 16. 13, 5, 13, okay. This is so good. This is better than cake and ice cream <laughs> with peanuts and strawberry soda. And it's so good. This here is so good. If this doesn't get you, then I don't know what will. Can you come read this for me? Sure. Come here. Okay, thanks. Matthew 5, 13 through 16. So from here, starting with this heading and end right there. Salt for the earth and light for the world. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its taste, what can make it uh, salty? Again, it is good for nothing and can only be thrown out to the, and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp to put it under a tub. They put it on the lampstand where it shines for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine in the people's sight so that, seeing your good works, they may... Give praise to your Father in heaven. Thank you. So why have the light if you're not going to put it on top of the hill or mountain so that the world can see it and be drawn onto the same God that you're drawn onto? Why have the light if you're going to hide the light? I really would like to know that. 
And, and it's not just in this room, but out there in the world, too. Why go to church every day to learn about the truth and then go out of the door and fail in life? And then you don't question that. In God, there is no fear. Really, there is no fear. Yesterday, there were more of them because they were out there. The union brought them out there and all that kind of stuff, right? And I know the union brought them out there because uh, um, I used to work for the union. I know how the union operates. And, uh, but I have another example for you, though. So there are a few of us and a truckload of them. That's what I like about the light. One can change the world because we got everything on our side, everything, right, on our side. And so those people on the other side couldn't stand seeing the few on this side. It just warmed down. They were, like, ir- irritated, agitated, and upset. As a matter of fact, a couple of them came over to get us. There were two black women who came over, and, and they were like, uh, where is South Central L.A. Tea Party located? I said, here's my car. You can go on the site and check it out. We're all over. I said, we're in South Central We are not in South Central L.A. Um, I live in South Central L.A. And she said, you guys are just Republicans anyway. <laughs> and she got all mad. <laughs> and then the lady that was with her, she was like, you should be ashamed of yourself being black and being out here. <laughs> and, and she said, like, we are, referring to black men and women, we are kings and queens. We were here first. And then she said, I'm a queen. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, lady, uh, as black as the ace of spades. From South Central. <laughs> and she said, who, who are paying you to be here? I said, the same people who are paying you. And that shut her up. <laughs> and, then, and then she said, well, I'm a queen. I said, lady, I can think of many things to call you. Queen is not one. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, I am. And I'm a Christian. I said, Christian is not one either. And she got mad and ran away. Um, and then we had these two other women who came over who happened to be white women, uh, well, white women. They had like this sign of little kids who've been murdered or killed by guns. And so they were like all oh, walking around like this, all in your face like this. And then she came over to me with the, the sign of the, the, the kid. And I said, oh, is that child? No, she said, we're about life. I said, is that child dead or living? He's dead. I said, then you're not about life. You're holding up a dead person picture. You are not about life. I'm about living now and protecting myself while I'm alive. And so and then she ran away too. I knew y'all were mean. <laughs> I said, I didn't ask you to come over here. And so we had to deal with them with patience, with honesty, and let our light shine, and you will impact somebody. You really will. But if you hide away... And spirituality is different than religion. When you're born of God, when you're born of the light, you're supposed to go and live. Spirituality, I mean, religion is about going to church and fronting it, fronting it and pretending to be a Christian. All up in people's faces, making them mad, right? Just quote scripture. But spirituality, being born again of the light, is about power, authority, living, being free, and all that. And if you have fear, you're not of God. If you're not out on the front line, and I'm not telling you which front line to be on. You're not wrong just because you're not at a gun rally. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying you need to be on the front line at work, at home, at play, at church, at fun time, at dating, at being married, at every aspect of your life. You need to be on the front line, letting your light shine. You understand that? No? <laughs> Once you get saved, you will. <laughs> you will understand it and you will appreciate it. You really, really will. It changes your whole life, your concept of life, your precepts of life. It changes everything when you are truly guided by the light. 
Really? I noticed yesterday, thank you for coming, but some people were just there for the media. As soon as the camera showed up, they run it all over to the cameras. Uh, or they wanted, they wanted so badly to go and attack the children of Satan. They just, I, I, we had to literally hold them down. I'm like, no, we're not going to, this is a peaceful rally. We, we deal with them, we be honest, but we're not going to attack them. We have to let our light shine. Just letting your light shine is enough, believe me. But speaking up when you have to and not having fear, it does impact. It really, really does. And uh, so I want you to know that. And then I got one more scripture and I'm done with the scripture thing. Um, this is from James 1, chapter 1, verse 22 20 through 25. James chapter 1, 22 through 25. The only thing the scriptures are doing is validating what we already know within ourselves. All he's doing is telling you, hey, I'm giving you the power. Christ has, has returned. Well, Christ came, put everything back in order. All authority has been given unto you. Isn't that something? He's just telling us what we already know. James 1, 22 through 25. Rhonda, will you come and read this? You notice I'm not using white people to read today. <laughs> I'm using blacks and Mexicans. What I do, mess up last time? Huh? What I do, mess up last time? No, you do it so well, I use you all the time. But I want blacks to learn to read here. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> and I'm talking about myself. <laughs> One of the reasons I have everybody, I have people to come up and read too, because I can't read that well either. Uh, let's see, what page is this for me? 1997. Rhonda, how do you feel when I make that joke about black not reading? I just think you're crazy. See there? <laughs> That's all you think about it, and you'll be fine. 1997 for me here. Okay, here we go. One, uh, chapter 1, verse 22. Oh, through uh, 25. So start right here, but you must, and then undertake it. But you must do what the word tells you and not just listen to it and deceive yourselves. Anyone who listens to the word and takes no action is like someone who looks at his own features in the mirror and once he's seen what it looks like, goes off and immediately forgets it. <laughs> but anyone who looks steadily at the perfect law of freedom and gets to it, not listening and forgetting, but putting it into practice will be blessed in every undertaking. Amen, amen. Isn't that sweet? I know so many people, and you do too, and some of you may be guilty. You come here for an example, you hear the truth, don't judge your enemies, don't judge yourself, don't gossip about people. Get involved, and before you can get out of the door, you forgot about it. I have heard people admit, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm afraid, or I'm, I'm this or that. And they don't realize in that very moment of seeing that about themselves, they have changed in that very moment. But they forget it, and the moment they walk outside the door, they're back in their old way for the whole week. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I know no one here is guilty of this. <laughs> I'm talking to the other folks. <laughs> but that's mind-blowing to me. It really, really is. It, it is, it is, it is. Now, either you don't realize you have the light or you don't care about having the light or you don't have the light. The interesting thing is, most, all people have that opportunity to just receive it. I mean, it's just there for you just like that. And you can change just like that, right? But the church has made that difficult for you too. The churches have done that to you too. And God is right at hand. I'm telling you, it's so beautiful. And you can fight any war. And not you, but he's just, he let you see. He's like, it's something fighting through you, fighting through you, right? And you know you're not doing it. But you know the source is coming from somewhere else. Just like the children of Satan. I don't know if they know that the source is, is coming from somewhere else, the things that they do. Because I don't remember just thinking of, oh, I'm driven by Satan. But at the time, I was driven by the devil. His spirit, his identity. Isn't that amazing? Is this like good news or what? 
No. Is it good news? Yeah. Y'all don't sound all happy about it. Amen. <laughs> it's good news. And uh, in my prayer, I always ask God to give me more light. You know, I want more wisdom. I sit quietly and know him, but I always say, you know what, just give me more light. Because I know if he gives me the light, the more light, if there is a thing as more light, then I'm going to see what to do and what not to do. You know, everything else is apparent to you. And I, I want to encourage you to ask him for it. Give me more light. You don't have to ask for a car or a horse in a buggy or whatever it is you want. He, you would see how to get those things. They will be added unto you if you're guided by the light. And I want you to have the light. And I realize that we can win this physical battle without a whole truckload of people. It really doesn't take but one or two with the light. But the more that are out there fighting, the greater impact we will have around the country. Not just here in L.A., but around the country. Let your light shine. And if your light is not shining, then I would really go back in my prayer closet, shut up and know God, because you don't know him yet. He's, he's all powerful. We are his children. We are brothers and sisters in him, and, and he would take care of us. But you got to let him guide you. 